All right, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, <clears throat> Marvel <laughs> Council Champions Kavam just dropped this on us, and so essentially, it's uh, it's an update to Alliance War for season nineteen. And so, I tried to make it as concise as possible. So, I, I made this little um, uh, this notepad. So you can't see it, but I'll be reading off of it. Um, so. First thing they did, they talk about the story, blah, 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 how Karina is making the Grandmaster the, the person who controls the Alliance Wars. Uh, there will be two new maps, uh, and the map changes will take effect on June 24th. They have two maps. One is for people playing on easy and normal, and then one map for people playing on intermediate, hard challenger, and expert. So anyone not easy and normal will get the other map. Um, and so as you can see here, the, the easy and normal map, it's uh, six paths. Uh, looks like it still has the same amount of mini bosses. It's uh, And then we go to the map that most people will be playing on. And this has nine paths each. So I actually have it pulled up right here. So this is the easy map. Um, it looks like uh, people on easy will have six fights per path. Uh, and then they'll have uh, their respective mini boss. But here's the intermediate hard uh, challenger and experts, and so it looks pretty confusing at first. But uh, what it is is that so if we look at lane one, which is goes right here, um, it's not the center center, um, but it takes a node one, it takes node ten, so that's two fights, and then it has two. Let's see, three fights uh, for uh, to get into the next section. Um, so I, I feel like most people will probably end up taking, let's say, three, six. Uh, it looks like about six or seven fights per path. Um, maybe less. I, I'm, I'm going to say it's about six fights uh, before getting to the mini bosses over here. And uh, they actually list all the nodes as well. Um, and then we have actually new nodes. So I actually did write these on a notepad to make it a little bit easier for myself. Uh, oh, the other thing about the maps is that, uh, yeah, for our maps, there's still nine paths, so there will still be a backup. Uh, but for strike counter, so all these, um, so it's like two of each, right? And for strike counter, you will start for with three charges. So with uh, uh, three light charges, three medium charges, and two heavy charges and so if you, any of those charges so basically what happens is when you land three light attacks you will have zero light attack charges and so if you get to zero the defender for strike counter fury will gain a fury passive and then in order to reset this you have to land a special attack so um it doesn't i don't think yeah, it doesn't state uh, how big the fury is going to be. Uh, let's see, here you said, uh, when any charges, the defender gains a fury passive over time until the charges are reset. Uh, okay, so it looks like the defender actually gains fury passives over time. So it might be like a, an aggression fury type node where they keep getting furies as long as you're at zero charges. And so, okay, so. When you have zero charges, once you use three light attacks, the defender starts gaining furies. And then in order to reset that, you're going to have to use a special attack. Uh, same thing goes for combat power rate, uh, which is the next node down. So once you get to zero charges of any of, uh, any of the three, uh, so you probably want to mix up your attacks and do like a medium, medium, light, light, and then go for a heavy. And then maybe you have a champion that can combo into heavy. Uh, you might want to do like a heavy special attack. So that might be good. So for the combat power rate, uh, instead of them gaining furies, um, let's see, your power rate actually decreases over time until it's reset. So uh, it looks like Hyperion like would be pretty nice on this node. Um, Let's see, so we got Steady Build Up Fury, and this, let's see, so this is where the defender gains 100% defensive ability accuracy, so think of like Electro, right? So if you were to reduce Electro's defensive ability accuracy by 100%, he would still have another 100%, so in this node you would use like Quake or Namor, um, and so uh, what happens is, 
When you gain 3 debuffs, the defender gains 150% fury passive until the defender has 0 buffs. Uh, debuffs, I'm sorry. Uh, and then, uh, so once you purify a debuff, you actually gain a fury passive. And it will last for 10 seconds. So what happens is, if you gain 3 debuffs, the defender gains a fury passive. If you purify any of the debuffs, you gain a fury passive for 10 seconds. And the defender will not uh, will continue to have that fury passive until you get zero debuffs. So somebody that will uh, remove debuffs, uh, like I don't know, like Elsa for example, might be good. Um, then you got steady build up, unblockable. So same same thing. Uh, the uh, the defender, if you gain three debuffs, the defender becomes unblockable until you have zero debuffs. If you purify any of those debuffs, you get a 7 second unblockable. So it's a pretty interesting node. I kind of like it. Uh, although it, it'll probably be pretty stressful, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we got ebb, flow, ebb and Flow knockdown. So the defender, so for both Ebb and Flows, um, the defender will have a 90% damage reduction protection. And for knockdown, you will have to knock down the opponent to remove that protection. You will also gain a fury for six seconds. And when the fury expires, the debuffs on the defender are purified. Uh, and for intercept, it's a little different. So they will have a protection, but instead of gaining a fury passive, um, you will actually gain a precision passive. So it kind of seemed like it was a way to have ghosts not be able to do this but you just have to do another hit i believe i'm not sure if uh if how ghosts will work on this um uh, ebb and flow intercept because it's a six second precision passive which gives you a 30 percent crit chance uh increased crit chance but uh yeah uh ghost gets rid of those ones i'm not sure if it, uh, the the precision buff will be removed once you uh use another attack um so yeah it's weird so and then I, I guess when your precision passive expires they go back to having that 90 percent protection so that's interesting um then you have buff imbalance so if the defender gains a buff say you put a hyperion on this node uh which he will basically always have a power gain <laughs> buff so you probably want somebody that nullifies or fate seals um and so if hyperion has a buff or power gain buff then the defender or i mean the attacker will actually have his power drained by 10 percent of the max power for six seconds so at first i was like i don't know how i feel about this but uh it doesn't look too bad it's 10 percent of a bar of power every six seconds so it would actually, it looks like it would actually take a minute to drain a full bar of power. So, it, yeah, it's really not that bad. Um, and then you got weakness, so instead of getting a power drain debuff, you actually get a weakness debuff that re reduces your damage by 15%. Use any special attack to remove it. You got window of opportunity. Uh, this one might be one of the tougher ones. So winner opportunity stun, the, the, the defender starts stun immune. And if you try to stun the, the defender, the stun will actually get reflected onto you for 4 seconds. And it actually flips. Um, so at the start of fight for 12 seconds, there will be stun immune. You don't want to stun the opponent in the first 12 seconds. The next 12 seconds, they will become stunnable. But... Um, once the, so it'll have 12 seconds on, 12 seconds off, 12 seconds on, 12 seconds off, and it'll keep flipping, and whenever the opponent, or the defender, uh, returns to the stun immune, all debuffs are removed. So you gotta watch out if you stun an opponent at the very last second before they become stun immune again, all debuffs will get removed. And then there's hazard shift, that one looks kinda tough, but it kinda looks like a quake fight. Um, so essentially the way it works, it's kind of like a biohazard, it, it's almost like biohazard. So there'll be a 40% chance to inflict 
the attacker with incinerate debuff and this will happen for seven seconds so the first seven seconds if you attack the opponent uh, you'll have 40% chance that uh, you will get dealt a an incinerate debuff on you 30% attack over seven seconds the next seven seconds it'll actually flip to poison and the next seven seconds it'll be incinerate uh, that you'll get on you so uh, I can see how you might be able to use this to your advantage, but 7 seconds feels like a long time. Uh, it might not be, but I can see like Red Hulk being a decent option. Actually, Red Hulk might rock this, because um, he, I believe he should be able to convert both of those into... Um, yeah, this looks like a Red Hulk path, uh, <laughs> so that's pretty good. Uh, they have path identities, so this is the path identities. Um, pa I think path identities is actually a good thing. Um, so if you guys remember the old map, um, the second map, uh, the map before this, right? Uh, path six to seven was all these like region like uh, type of nodes. So we have uh, uh, it was node twenty four was buffet, node thirty one was um, I think it was buffet again. And then node, I believe it's 42, was Arc Overload. And then you also had, I want to say, I don't think it's 48. I think it was 50, I want to say it's 52. It was node 52 that had um, like uh, either 100% or 200% increased regen rate. So uh, Pass will now have uh, identities like this, which I actually do like. Um, that way, path assigning is going to be a little less of a headache, I feel. Okay, so uh, we went through all these nodes. Uh, so this is kind of important. Um, they want to do something about alliance war rating. So they, they, they're basically saying that um, some alliances have war rating that's way inflated and some have de uh, some that it's way too deflated so essentially what they're gonna do is they're gonna be cutting every alliances war rating by 50% so if you're at 3000 it's gonna go to 1500 so kind of uh, interesting um, for alliances that win every war like uh, I don't think it'll have a huge impact on rankings uh, just because it might actually so I'm not sure how the they're gonna work with the the tiers because like tier one it has more points right but if you were tier one you get cut in half and then all of a sudden you're uh, so let's say a tier one uh, alliance uh, gets cut and they go to tier five and then um, a another tier one alliance gets cut and they go to tier six the point difference is actually gonna uh, matter a little bit um, so initially, it, it might suck a little bit, but I, overall, it should balance out. Uh, and then they also talk about uh, more things to come. We have reward changes. Um, this is something that John talked about, defense tactics and attack tactics. So essentially, if you put on the node, um, uh, let's say flow, for example, and the defender is a, a you have a, an off offensive champion like magic, you will gain some kind of bonus for bringing in magic uh, into uh, into alliance war. I it, this shouldn't. Uh, I, hopefully, this doesn't only affect when you're attacking an opponent that has um, that is a flow defender. Hopefully, it's against every fight. Uh, and then uh, this is some kind of interesting. I didn't see this coming. Alliance war solo events. So I wonder what that could mean. Uh, and then the Kaban Mike actually lists all the path identities. So this is for easy and normal. Um, and then he has the ones for intermediate, hard challenger, and expert. Um, so I actually have that over here. And so most of them don't look insane. Uh, for path one, you'll have to take Arc Overload, uh, Vigorous Assault. So Vigorous Assault, I believe it's they become unblockable when they have a region buff. We got masochism and indomitable uh vigor indomitable so that's uh every couple seconds if you don't deal i believe 25 percent of the opponent's max health they gain a regen buff uh you got buffet and lion hearts let's see um here's some of the new nodes strike counter fury and then strike counter combat power rate so this is the ones where uh if you have those charges and you lose 
Uh, you get get to zero on any of them, you have to land a special attack for um, the opponent to lose whatever bonus they gain uh, for that time being. You have some Mystic Ward, I don't think. Uh, Path 3 looks decently easy, uh, except for, I forget what Ch uh, Chitinous Thorns is. Um, let's see, Path 4. Uh, got some of the new nodes, Steady Build Up, Unblockable. Uh, so again, Steady Build Up is let's see steady build up is if you gain three debuffs the opponent gains um uh, a fury or unblockable depending on which one you get and then you have to um let's see oh i'm sorry uh and you have to purify all three debuffs in order for them to lose that um either fury or unblockable uh path five is ebb and flow knockdown so you have to knock uh so this is the protection nodes uh, path six, you got aggression fury. Oh, I feel bad for this guy. Aggression fury is uh, one of the scariest nodes. Um, you got rage here. Power focus two. Power focus one. Um, I don't know what this unlimited power is. Uh, path seven looks like a power gain type. So you got kinetic transference. So if um, you hit into, uh, if they hit you on your on your block, they gain power. You got Matador, you can't gain power unless the opponent uses special attack. You got Spite, uh, Aspect Evolution, I hate that node, and Kinetic Transference. So that looks like a difficult fight. Um, kinetic Transference plus Aspect Evolution, interesting. Uh, buff imbalances, so if the opponent gains a buff, then you get power drained or you get a weakness debuff. Um, let's see, that's path 8 and path 9, uh, shifting hazards, and then windows of opportunity. I think, um, uh, window of opportunity is probably going to be one of the more difficult ones that they introduce, and the, um, the one where they gain, uh, an unblockable if you get three debuffs, although it'd be kind of interesting who they put on there for you to gain three debuffs. Maybe with the, with the new new defense defense tactics maybe I don't know um, actually don't know what uh, one of these nodes was uh, cold turkey 3 uh, yeah I don't know which one, uh, what that one is uh, then you have all the boss nodes as well so the boss nodes don't look uh, crazy you got strike counter fury um, <laughs> I thought I for a second I thought that said heavy Hitler but <laughs> it says heavy hitter so basically, they are un uh, unstoppable while they're using a special attack. Again, I don't know what unlimited power is. Um, I'm sure someone will call it out. But yeah, these are all the minis. So I don't know. Overall, I th it looks good. Some of the nodes I'm not too sure about. Um, initially, I thought that um, Hazard Shift was going to be worse. But I believe in some cases you might use Red Hulk. In other cases, you might end up using Quake or even Ghost, actually. So you have a couple options there. Um, Window of Opportunity might be a little rough, it seems. Um, you just got to time everything well. Um, aside from that, uh, buff and balance isn't really that bad. Like if you put a Hyperion on there and you, you're losing 10% of a bar of power every six seconds. So it's really not that bad. Um, as far as the power drain goes, um, it's just, I think the steady buildup, if you somehow gain three debuffs and the opponent get, becomes completely unblockable, that might be a little scary. Um, aside from that, it doesn't look too bad. I like how they actually went ahead. Uh, so it's it's something I've been talking about for a while where uh, these nodes, uh, a lot of nodes were take away, take away, take away. But some of these nodes do give you, um, for playing it right, they do give you bonuses. So uh, that's good to see. Uh, hopefully going forward, we see more of that as well. Um, some more fun stuff and uh, yeah, people talking about this. But um, yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you guys think. I'll leave this in the description down below. Um, that's going to be it to the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys in the next one. Uh, let's see what Kavan comes up with next. Take care, guys.